Hello, my name is Dr. Jairo Cruz Jr. and I'm here to talk to you today about uh, fungal foot infections of the skin, particularly those causing um, wounds and massive infection of the foot. Uh, so far in the past year, I've had three incidences of a massive infection of the foot secondary to uh, athlete's foot infection. Now, um, this blog is important to me and I think to the general public because it, athlete's foot is not something to take uh, for granted because um, it's a pathology that is somewhat benign, uh, typically just causing itchiness and scaling to the foot. But when it does reach a critical level or severe uh, state, uh, it can be detrimental to the health of the patient and also uh, the limb. So um, again, in the past three years, uh, or excuse me, uh, a year or two, I've seen at least three to five incidences of a severe infection of tinea pedis or athlete's foot to the foot therefore causing uh, some, kind of some kind of surgical intervention uh, in order to pre uh, preserve the foot and, and save the limb from, uh, from amputation. Um, uh, two of the cases were in uh, uh, young males who um, worked in a uh, uh, busy environment of, uh, of the restaurant industry and where um, there was lots of uh, uh, fluid uh, from, uh, from, the, from the kitchen uh, on the floor and of course just from sweating inside of the uh, kitchen shoes that, that the patients were wearing and this caused a lot of uh, sweating excess sweating and a lot of uh, buildup of uh, tinea or fungus uh, within the shoe and of, on the foot so uh, the patient presented to us in the hospital uh, with severe pain and swelling of the uh, foot and uh, particularly upon examination i noticed that there was a breakdown in skin in between the digits of the foot, so interdigitally uh, in between the foot in the web space is where I saw the wound uh, develop, and that's where I think the infection began. Uh, what happens is, is when you have um, athlete's foot in between the digits, the, the area is very uh, moist and therefore um, the skin can break down in between the digits and cause an open wound. Once that open wound happens, now you're exposed to a plethora of bacteria, uh, including such things as MRSA, uh, uh, which can uh, cause a super infection of the wound and therefore um, uh, expedite the um, infection up the leg and, and possibly you know uh, to a systemic level where, where the patient is showing signs of uh, septic shock so um, <clears throat> essentially this patient uh, these two patients being young and, and fairly healthy um, it was uh, a, a great importance for me to correct the situation right away I knew that IV antibiotics and uh, oral antibiotics um, could help but they would take too long and therefore could um, could uh, be too slow to correct the problem. So um, in these two cases, I opted for a surgical intervention. And the reason being was because the, the foot was in a severe state and that um, uh, it looked as if the infection was spreading up the leg. If the infection spreads up the leg, that's very dangerous territory because then uh, these, these situations can lead quickly to a, a baloney amputation, which would not be an ideal outcome for a 26-year-old male. Um, <clears throat> so. Um, what I did was I took them to the OR and I essentially opened up the site where I, I thought the origination of the wound was, which was interdigitally in between the two uh, d digits of the toe. When I opened that area, there was obviously um, necrotic tissue and, and pus in the area, and that was all cleaned out and uh, the devitalized tissue of the area was also cleaned out. Um, this uh, was important because um, if we left the infected skin there, uh, it wouldn't, um, the, the wound wouldn't heal. So the wound had to be debrided and the, and the wound had to be drained in order to um, create a healing potential for the patient uh, of, of his foot. Um, if I kept the antibiotics on board and, and did not do a surgical invention, yes, sooner or later the swelling would calm down, but it would take a, a much longer period of time, maybe a week or two, for it to take an effect um, since the uh, devitalized tissue and pus was just sitting there in the foot. Um, that, that's a good sign uh, of, uh, of um, infection or deep infection if you have uh, severe pain and uh, a lot of swelling to the foot um, around the area of the ulcer or the opening in the skin. That's usually a, a, um, a good sign that there's a deeper infection that needs to be uh, taken out so that the patient can recover quickly. Um, we also treated with antibiotics and antifungal oral therapy uh, after the incision and drainage of the wound 
but um, nonetheless, that was just for residual or prevention for uh, residual infection to the area. The main treatment was the uh, incision and drainage or the cleaning up of the, of the wound uh, to get rid of the bacteria and devitalized tissue. Uh, that was the main treatment. Um, this, these two particular patients went on to uh, a healthy recovery. There was no need for any kind of amputation. Um, the skin healed well. Uh, again, they're young and healthy and, and, and essentially they had to be offloaded. So they had to take some time off of work, but obviously their employment, uh, their, their, um, their superiors uh, agreed with the severity of the situation, therefore let them take the time uh, in order to heal their wounds so they, could be, so they can come back quickly and, and return to their uh, previous job. Um, another example that I had was a recent patient who um, <clears throat> had an unknown cause of uh, a superinfection to the foot. Essentially, uh, the patient came into the hospital and was um, complaining of foot pain and swelling and, and severe pain, and, and they were treated outpatient uh, in an outpatient setting with uh, antibiotics. Um, the situation then progressed to a more severe situation where the, the foot uh, turned different colors and, and a wound appeared on the top of the foot. Um, and encompassing the bottom of the foot with, uh, with severe uh, swelling and drainage and necrotic tissue to the area. Um, this again, uh, upon examination, I saw the patient maybe a week after the treatment of the antibiotics started, but it, to my opinion, it looked as if the situation was the same as the previous uh, two patients where <clears throat> there was uh, possibly a wound in between the toes where um, the, uh, the tinea infection or the athlete's foot caused the wound and therefore um, uh, created an opening in the skin which created an opportunity for other pathogens to come in and super infect the wound. Um, it almost looked like gas gangrene which is a, a very uh, dangerous situation because it usually leads to um, a, a lot of morbidity or a lot of uh, detriment to the patient's limb. Uh, but it was not, uh, this was not the case, luckily, in this situation. Um, <clears throat> we treated it accordingly, where we, we treated with uh, IV antibiotics and um, also an incision and drainage and debridement of the wound um, so that we can clean up all the, the dead tissue and clean out all the pus that was in the area. And the, the pus and infection actually was tracking up the foot uh, along the tendon sheaths and along the musculature, which is a very dangerous situation because then the musculature and the tendons are affected and therefore limitation of movement may occur with this patient. Um, this patient uh, uh, unfortunately had involvement with the tendon sheaths and muscles and may undergo uh, some kind of tendinous graft in a later, in a later time uh, in order to uh, restore function to, or proper function to the foot if needed. Um, the patient after, uh, after the uh, procedure was completed uh, obviously felt better uh, with the pain since it was um, decompressed and, and there was less swelling to the area since the infection was eradicated with, uh, with the surgical procedure. Uh, nonetheless, IV antibiotics and oral antibiotics upon discharge from the hospital would be warranted for the patient to protect the patient from any other pathogens that may have not um, uh, manifested yet into the area. <clears throat> Um, so the lesson learned in these stories and uh, these three examples of patients is that if someone has a, a fungal infection, let's say there's an itchiness between the toes and, and when you examine in between your toes you see a macerated web space, web space which is usually uh, characterized by a white um, area with a soft skin. Uh, essentially it looks like you spent too much time in the pool where your skin gets wrinkled and white. That's what it will look like in between the toes. And there will be sometimes pain and there will sometimes be burning. Uh, but nonetheless, if you examine your feet daily and look for these situations, uh, particularly between the fourth and fifth digits and the third and fourth digits, so those are two most common places that I see the situation occur, um, you have to look at your feet and then uh, see whether or not um, you are having actually these symptoms but may not be having the severe infection yet. What we want to prevent is having the severe infection altogether, so therefore catching it early is, is paramount in, in treating the situation. So uh, when you come and see us, we examine your feet and we uh, take a skin culture or, or a skin biopsy of the area to see whether or not it's fungus or some kind of psoriasis or some kind of dermatitis to the area. Uh, once we get the results back and we determine that it's fungus, then we, um, we uh, treat, treat it properly. So it can be oral antifungals or it can be topical antifungals that we apply to the, um, to the uh, interdigital uh, athlete's foot. Um, also, if we see that you have hyperhidrosis or excessive sweating to the feet, then we'll also maybe tell you to change your socks more frequently, maybe three times a day or four times a day if needed, and also change out shoe gear in the middle of the day in order to prevent excess moisture to the foot during times of uh, when you're working or standing on your feet. 
Uh, the other thing we can do is we can also prescribe um, dehydrating agents. Uh, essentially, it looks like a, um, a stick of deodorant or antiperspirant, and, we, and you apply it to the foot, and uh, it decreases swelling um, to the foot. Uh, sometimes if hyperhidrosis is present and all these things fail, then sometimes a, a botulinum or a, a botulinum toxin or Botox can be used to deaden the, the nerves that, um, that uh, create the sweat. Uh, and, and therefore the, the sweat will not happen in those areas anymore. Uh, this is obviously avoided because there are some complications with the procedure, but it is an option if uh, the severity of the condition um, rendered or uh, the severity of the um, excessive sweating um, is um, uh, non, non-reactive or, or doesn't improve with any of the other conservative methods. Uh, powder uh, or foot powder also works well for um, a conservative measure and, uh, and of application of powder to the feet uh, can absorb some of the sweat and therefore decrease excessive sweating in the shoe. So once we have all these conservative methods on board and are treating the patient, we basically monitor the patient to see whether or not they improve. Sometimes what happens is that there is a defect or, or a hammer toe or a curly toe, a curly um, a shape to the toe, and that's causing increased pressure in between two toes. So that interdigital uh, maceration is caused because of the fact that there's a deformity with the toe itself. If that's the case, sometimes surgical intervention is warranted where, number one, we either correct the hammer toe and straighten out the toe so it's not pushing into the other toe, or number two, we uh, syndactylize or create a webbed toe space to that area. What that webbed toe space will do if when we create a webbed toe in between the two digits is that it decreases the, um, the uh, sulcus the, the gap or the, the depth of the uh, interdigital space. So therefore, moisture cannot get trapped in there. So essentially, if we create a web digit, um, we decrease the space in which a macerated situation can occur or a tinea uh, type infection can occur because there is no space for it to um, develop moisture in. Um, this is obviously not a first line treatment. This is after conservative treatments have failed and uh, usually it's six months to a year after conservative treatments have failed. Um, but again, these are options and options to consider when uh, trying to preserve the limb for, for the future. Um, if you or a loved one have problems with this type of situation where you have a chronic athlete's foot and are worried about your situation in between your toes, please do not hesitate to call 813-875-0555. The doctors of Advanced Podiatry are very well versed in treating all types of fungal and skin infections, and therefore we can render efficient and effective treatment to you uh, uh, right away. Uh, again, the number is 813-875-0555, and uh, we look forward to seeing you. Thanks. Thank you.